MCC Island is finally out, and I've been heavily addicted, especially to Sky Battle. I've been obsessed with this minigame. But the thing is, what you might be thinking, Ollie, there's so many items in Sky Battle. What items should I be using? And the answer is everything, really. In this video, I'm going to detail every single item in Sky Battle and how you can use each to make sure you get a bunch of wins. Now, if we're going to cover everything, we need to go over the basics first. The swords and the axes. Swords, you'll always start with a stone sword and you can find iron and diamond. And then for axes, you can find stone axes, you can find iron axes, and just in the middle chest, you can find diamond axes. Now, which one should you use? You kind of want to use it based on personal preference and situational based things. So axes, when you hit a crit hit, do a lot, lot more damage. And swords are a lot faster and do a lot more consistent damage, even without crit hits. So just for a scope, a crit hit with a stone axe will do the same damage as a diamond sword. If you don't know what a crit is, basically if you're not sprinting and whilst you're falling, you hit someone with your axe or sword, it will do a critical hit. And with axes, that's a significant amount. But like I said, axes are a lot slower. So you need to be confident with it and know that you're going to hit your shots. Otherwise, it's going to go really badly. Also, if you're in a 2v1 situation or a fight like this where you could get knocked back and you need to do as much damage as fast as possible consistently, then use a sword. So like I said, I use a bit of a mix, but you definitely want to try and use axes where you can, especially for situations where you're like behind them and they have no clue you're there. It's essentially a free like five hearts. So I keep these in my one and two slot and I switch them as I need. Thought I'd quickly mention for the people that don't know, when I say speed, when you hit with your axe or sword to do maximum damage, you need to wait for it to like come up almost. So when you hit someone, you notice the graphic disappears briefly and then it'll come up and that means it'll do maximum damage on the hit. It's not spam hitting like in bed walls. To show you how long it takes axes to come up and compared to swords, here's them side by side. So you really need to hit your shots with axes. So make sure you remember not to spam hit whatever you do. The only other kind of sword that you can get is a wooden knockback sword, which I think it speaks for itself. It's a little bit cringe, but hey, if someone's like right near the void and you can get a free hit on them it's a little bit funny and a free kill next is bows and there's not really much to say on bows i mean you've got the normal bow you've got the power bow and you've got the punch bow bows yeah a bit of a mix hit people off bridges especially with a punch bow the punch bow is so cringe but so funny to just knock people off bridges the other bows don't do too much knockback if someone's crouching so don't try it too much but say if they're speed bridging and you manage to get a shot on them whilst they're uncrouched it can do pretty well but in this version of minecraft bows do a lot of damage so don't be afraid to bow spam especially if someone's low. I may call you cringe for it, but I, I will do the same. I'm going to be honest. I'm a hypocrite. Speaking about spamming things, let's move on to snowballs. Now, they are brilliant. You think that they don't do too much knockback until someone's crouching on a bridge and you have 16 of them and you could just spam them with snowballs. It, it instantly gets them off. There have been so many occasions where I just caught someone bridging and I'll just spam a whole stack of snowballs at them and they'll fall off. It doesn't feel fair to get the kill, but it gets them so easy. Another really, really funny way to get kills with snowballs. I stand there with someone as they're about to jump over to my platform and as they're mid-jump, I hit them with a the snowball so it stops them moving forward and they just fall straight into the void. It's the funniest thing to see and for some reason, from when I've experienced it, no one's expected it. Like there was one time where I did it to a whole squad and just threw one snowball and they all fell in the void. It's so funny. Fishing rods. Now they're like snowballs, but the opposite way. Throw it at someone, reel it back once you know they're uncrouched and send them flying into the sky and hopefully into the void too. So bows are good to finish someone off. Snowballs are useful for knockback, but how are you going to kill someone when they're low and they're boxed in? That's where the harming orbs come in. They're OP for this. A harming orb is like a harming splash potion, which you're in the game as well. Just work like a normal potion. Both are really good for getting that last bit of damage, but the harming orb is something special. When you throw the harming orb, it hits the surface, then drops. A harming orb does the range of harming potion effects, but in like a five by five area. And it also does like one knockback as well. So if you've got a lot of damage on someone, then they've boxed themselves so they can eat and regen. Throw a harming orb down. It does three hearts and that should do that last bit of damage. Also, if you see someone going on a bridge to cross the void, you could throw it just before they get on. By the time they're in that part of the bridge, because it takes three seconds to go off, it might do a little bit of knockback to hopefully knock them into the void. One I forgot about was the crossbow that you have in the game. You can only get it in the middle chest. I personally don't like it, but it does do a lot more damage than the bow, but it's also a good item to have reloaded. So you could get in a fight and if you need to run away, you can quickly run and then turn around and get a quick crossbow shot and just to do that extra bit of damage, which sometimes can make or break a fight. Another item you can use in a fight that can do extra damage for pretty much nothing is a lava bucket. Just keep it in one of your slots and as you're in a fight, quickly put it on their feet. And if they have a better sword or you have less health, this could help you win that fight a lot, lot more. Okay, the next category of items is food. And this isn't much about using it. It's more about how you use it because you're always going to want to use food. There is literally only steak and 
and golden apples. Golden apples, because they're rare and only in certain chests. I keep them for situations like this, where there's a lot of people around me and I'm like really low. I would eat a gapple so I can regen really fast. I was going to eat a golden apple in this fight, but I kind of realized that there was no one going to drop on me so I could just eat steak rather than waste that golden apple. Because whenever you're eating, if you can, you need to be away from everyone because you can't hit them at all when you're eating. So if you're mid-eating and they've got two or three hits on you, you're going to be low for the fight and there's going to be nothing you can do about it, really. So always be in a safe position when you're eating. Steak, you want to try and eat whenever you're hungry, like at all. Ideally, you don't want to be going into a fight if you've not got full hunger. Because if they do and you don't, you're not going to be able to regen. And they can easily win that fight on you. So if you really need to run away to eat your food, definitely do it. Now, there is a situation where you could be low, but your hunger hasn't gone down. Just run away and keep jumping. If you're jumping, your hunger goes down faster. So just do that until you can eat and then you'll be able to regen. Clutch items. Now, clutch items, there's literally two again, and they do the exact same thing, but they have a little bit different properties. For landing clutches, you can either use a cobweb or you can use scaffolding. Just put this in a slot, ideally with a keybind where you can react fast. And as you're falling, you can click your keybind and land an MLG. A cobweb, you'll be stuck in it for a good second afterwards and we'll have to break it, which if there's a lot of people around, you might get stuck and you might be an easy kill for them. And a scaffolding, you can land in it and just break it instantly. So that's a lot faster. Now, I guess at the end of the day, this is personal preference. I use cobwebs because they're a lot more common and can be used in other situations. And plus, I'm going to be honest, I have no idea how you use scaffolding. So I see it in a game and I just smile and wave. Now I know what you're thinking. Ollie, you can't clutch with them if you're falling into the void. That's where I become a TikToker and transition into the sparks. The first spark and easily the best one is the levitation or the levy. It's basically a potion that you right click on and it gives you that effect. So the levy or the levitation gives you a few seconds of levitation. So if you're falling in the void, you can just right click on that and hopefully have enough levitation to get out of it. Honestly, you don't know how useful these things are. Or you do, I don't know. Especially when you have a lot of them, you practically won if you got a million levitation. When using these defensively, they also double down to get out of fights that you just can't take. Either you're low or you know the name and you're like, oh crap, they're good, they're good. Uh, you can just levy away. It's as simple as that. It's just a get out of jail free card. Now, these don't just have to be used defensively to save yourself. You can also use them to attack people. So if someone has the high ground, you want to get it. Or you almost killed someone in a fight and they just slipped out of your grasp. Just pop a levy and get right up to the high ground. It's easy. However, be careful because if they spot you using that levy, they can hit you and then you'll be hovering over the void waiting for your death. Unless you have more levies, of course. On top of that, try and not go too high with it because you don't sink. You will just take full damage unless you have something to clutch with quickly. You'll take a lot of damage and sometimes even die. So if I'm going for a fight that someone's just a little bit up, I'll jump into the void and then I'll pop the levy just so I won't take too much full damage. Now, what if you're waiting for your death because you're low on HP? Well, that's where the regen orb comes in, my friend. Just like the levy, you want to have this in a slot where you can easily reach it with a keybind. And if you're low in a fight, you can just quickly switch to that keybind, pop your regen orb, and have a bunch more health. If you have one of these and your enemy doesn't, and you're in an even fight, it's also a guaranteed win. As long as you know, you're not that bad, right? So yeah, levies are good for avoiding the void, getting the high ground, or avoiding a fight. Regen orbs are really good for, well regening when you're not able to eat but desperately need that help an item that doesn't really have a category is enderpearls just use them as enderpearls okay maybe i should be a bit more specific if someone's low enderpearl onto them to get that last bit of damage if they've run away that's really it basically now these can only spawn in the middle chest and there's only two of them so they're pretty rare but hey if you get the two and don't give one to your teammate because you're selfish like me you can use these enderpearls to quickly pearl in and then pearl straight back out or i guess vice versa if you're really low you can just pearl out the fight easy but what if you're really low in that fight? You don't have ender pearls. You don't have a regen orb. You don't have a levitation. You're pretty much dead. Psych curveball time. We're bringing back the cobwebs, baby. If you've got people chasing you, quickly turn around, place a bunch of cobwebs. They get stuck in there. You can run away and regen. Now we've talked about every category, except for one. I save the best till last. It's time for my favorites. The explosives. Once again, two options. You got the TNT and you got the creepers. The TNT you place down, it takes like five seconds to explode. And the creepers, they just work like normal creepers. But for some reason, they pick and choose who they want to aggro on. Now these can be quite useful to get away from fights. Like if you spam them whilst you're running away from someone, people just sometimes turn away. It would have worked perfectly in this situation, but I didn't have any TNT or creepers. But I had cobwebs. Told you it works. I got away and ate just like nothing happened. But oh my goodness, if you have both, you can spam the cobwebs, get them stuck in the cobwebs. And because they're stuck in there, you can put TNT or creepers down and they'll just die. They can't do anything about it. It's OP. So yeah, the difference between them is a creeper needs someone to be there to explode and the TNT just explodes anyway. So TNT can be really good for exploding paths and roofs. Creepers can be really good for catching people off guard or if they're stuck in a cobweb. Now that seems about it, doesn't it really, for TNT and creepers? Ollie, why would explosives be your favorite thing? Well, it wouldn't be my favorite thing if it wasn't for this beloved map, Candyland. So on each of the pillars, you might have noticed that there's water elevators that you can go up. So if someone goes up one of the elevators but doesn't block it off, you put a creeper up there, you put TNT up there, you can't 
kill them. It's pretty much guaranteed. It's really hard to survive. Like, genuinely, you don't understand how many times I've just put one bit of TNT or one creeper up one of these, and I'll just wipe the entire squad that's up there. It's crazy. It's so overpowered. That's how you can get the real, real high kill games. And I'm pretty certain that is every way you can use every kind of item in the game. If I missed out a strat, just pop it in the comments so you can help some other people out. But I hope these tips help you and get you a lot of kills. Now, the only rule is you're not allowed to use these tips to kill me because I gave you them. It's kind of not allowed. Sorry. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this. If you enjoy MCC Island, I might make a bunch more videos on this, so feel free to subscribe. And plus, I stream this daily on my Twitch at twitch.tv slash me. so if you want to stop around and watch some MCC Island, feel free to stop by, but I appreciate you guys coming out, and I'll see you on the island. Wait, stop. Before you click off, I did win this game. I'd like to quickly say that I thought I'd just prolong it a little bit, just, just so I can prove it to you. I'm sure you believe me. You probably did believe me. Just in case you didn't believe me, I did win the game. By the way, I won the game. There it is. Yeah, that's what we've been waiting for. Yeah.